35,000 Poland fans gave Wembley a charged atmosphere last night. Their team lost. A blow to national pride for sure, but a new film by the country's best-known director is attempting to pep up national pride. Its subject, Lech Wałęsa, the co-founder of Solidarity, whose activism and political now helped end communism in Poland. An icon abroad, he is far more disputed at home in a country still grappling with the past and the present. Our Europe editor, Matt Fry, has been speaking to him and getting under the skin of Poland. Metallic dinosaurs from a distant era. The cranes of Gdansk still do what cranes do, but only just. The handful of welders we saw are a fraction of the 20,000 workers that used to clock in here. The famous shipyards of Gdansk. But the birthplace of modern Poland feels more like a graveyard of distant memories. Remember those heady days of the 1980s? It is here in the Lenin shipyard, as it was called then, that the Solidarity Union took on the communist regime in Warsaw and kicked sand in the face of Soviet oppression. And one man above all others became the embodiment of Polish defiance. Lech Wałęsa, the electrician turned union leader turned agent of change. For once, a moustache that inspired hope, not fear. He went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize and become his country's president, invited to the US Congress to utter words that electrified one world and terrified another. Me, Narut. We, the people. They love you. He's without doubt the most famous Pole alive, and as he told us himself, he is still nonplussed by the course of history. If somebody told me in the 80s, I just wouldn't have believed it. I just wouldn't have believed I would see Poland liberated. To live in a free Poland is just a dream. Wałęsa, accompanied by a cake, was in London for the premiere of a film out in theatres this week that celebrates his life. A movie monument made by Poland's most famous living film director, Andrzej Wajda. There are even plans to show the film to Barack Obama and Congress. Wałęsa, the national symbol of Polish defiance and resilience. Wajda, who's won just about every major accolade, including an honorary Oscar, still works in the film studios that bear his name. He believes that every nation needs its heroes, especially Poland. This is a film that was long awaited, that I had been working on for years, because I felt it was my need to immortalize Wałęsa in the eyes of the nation, so that the nation had this abiding image of Wałęsa. But there is a problem, and it becomes obvious at the gates to the Gdansk shipyard. And I noticed there are no pictures of Wałęsa on the gate, just the Pope. The hero from the film was conspicuous by his absence. We went on tour of the shipyard with Wałęsa's former comrades and not one of them had a good word to say about him. He's a man who's deceived us, he deceived the whole Polish nation. He's not the same person as he was in 1980, as we saw him in 1980. And he, was, he deceived us as a president and he's deceiving us now. In the place he used to call home, Wałęsa has been accused of everything, from being a former communist agent to squandering Poland's rebirth with an incompetent presidency. This is where the Solidarity Movement made history. This is where the Soviet Empire began to crumble. And although this location is iconic for the creation of post-communist Poland, there is so much debate and acrimony about what actually happened here, it's been really difficult for Poland to escape from the shadow of its own past. If you can't trust your own history, mm -hmm. which is what seems to be happening here, what does that do to a nation like Poland? I feel that somebody play with us. Someone is playing with you? Yeah. Poland has always felt like the plaything of its powerful neighbours. Russia turned it into a garrison, Germany into a graveyard. But it's also learned how to thrive in a treacherous neighbourhood. In the 16th century, this stunningly wealthy port was the New York of Europe. It was the only city outside England that performed Shakespeare in his own lifetime. Today, the traces of past grandeur have been scrubbed up nicely. The famous long square in the heart of Gdansk, 
totally destroyed during the Second World War and then lovingly rebuilt brick by brick, statue by statue afterwards. Today, this place stands as a symbol of a proud and affluent Poland. But if that's the case, how come so many young Poles are still desperate to leave? We heard one reason from a gaggle of businessmen huddled in an elegant restaurant. Wages are low, still. People are earning not much money. If you work in the UK and you wake eight, work eight hours a day, then you can live on a normal level. In here, if you want to work eight hours a day, eight hours a day, you will suffer poverty. With everyone working 12-hour days just to make ends meet, it's hardly surprising that Gdansk was deserted by 10 o'clock at night. We came across the dying embers of nightlife outside the Pijalina bar. Everyone we spoke to here was determined to leave Poland, but they had reservations about coming to the UK. It's really horrible, but it's honest, like a lot of English people, they don't like Polish. A lot of English people don't yeah. like Poles? Yes, it's like that. How do you know that? From TV. From TV? You know Nigel Farrow, for yeah. example? Nigel Farrow, he had a really bad discussion on TV on, in UK. Uh, so he's claiming that Eastern Europeans basically have no place in UK. Uh, do you know about Nigel Farage? You know, this, you know this person that she's talking about? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. So you think you're not welcome in the UK? You think you won't be welcome there? And it's really horrible because, come on, we are like, everybody thinks that Polish people, they are really poor, poor, and they are not intelligent people, really, because we have a lot of young, really intelligent people, really. In my opinion, Polish people, they are smart, they are, they are really intelligent. And so you find the whole concept of the Polish plumber insulting? Yeah. Yes, yes, in my opinion, it's like that. Nigel Farage, a household name in Gdansk, whatever next? Meet the Polish after hours Pavarotti, Wojtek Ventura. Io non rispondo mai per te adesso, perché io dico che noi non siamo qua per nulla. Che cosa faccio? Io faccio nulla di questo genere. Ma cosa fate tutti quanti voi? Vesti la giubba la faccia in farina. So do you think Poland should join the Euro? We have a great culture and we can be someone. But who? A nation of migrant workers, a cultural powerhouse, an eastern pillar of the European Union? Recently, the disputed hero Lech Wałęsa even suggested that Poland should merge with Germany, a country still seeking a role and a devoutly Catholic, tarnished icon seeking salvation in the afterlife. I've got some talents, and that's what I've sought to use. Because if I don't make the most of myself, I'll go to hell. And that's a disincentive, because I'd have to join Stalin and Lenin and all those other people down there. Poland's flat soil has always attracted invaders. It is soaked with the blood of European wars. Today, people may be seeking work elsewhere, but at least the country is free. Its economy is doing better than many others, and the Polish spirit is remarkably resilient. Matt Fry, Channel 4 News, Gdansk. Singing in Poland, I see, I see a future from that there. <laughs> he was in fine voice. <laughs>